What a day that will be When my Jesus I shall see When I look upon his face The one who saved me by his grace And forever I will be With the one who died for me What a day A glorious day that will be. There's just a lot of good praise in that song. You should look it up and listen to it. When he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. What a day, a glorious day that will be. Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. I haven't had internet for a couple of days, and I still don't have it, so <laughs> I'm recording by faith. I felt to go into First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians, and whenever it might upload, it's okay, because the Word of God is forever settled in heaven, so it doesn't get old. It doesn't go out of date. This isn't uh, Tuesday's news or Wednesday's news. This is uh, forever news of the Lord. First Thessalonians, I'm going to read the background to you. Uh, you know, Paul had to write to the churches. They would go through on these missionary journeys and get churches started. And uh, then, of course, the ones uh, <clears throat> that were pastors, etc., would write letters. Uh, they're asking about this. What are we doing about this? And uh, some of them were concerned with uh, they had heard enough that Jesus was coming back to establish his kingdom. But uh, there was evidently people that had died since they heard this, and they were thinking, well, they don't get to go in his kingdom. So Paul had to inform them, and because he informed them, you and I know about uh, the dead being raised first at what we term the rapture, the catching away of the church, and then those that are alive and remain joining them with Jesus. Well, let's read the background of it. This is likely the first extant letter Paul wrote. On his second missionary journey, he had to leave Thessalonica hurriedly. A short time later, Timothy rejoined Paul and reported to him certain questions the believers in Thessalonica had. Their problem was mainly what benefit it was to be a Christian if one died before Christ returned to establish his kingdom. It seemed to them that people who died would forfeit the blessings promised when Christ returned. Paul wrote that they need not worry about Christians who died. They would not be forgotten when Christ returns, for he would raise them from the dead just as he himself was raised. Those who are alive at the time will have no preference over those who have died, for they will all together ascend to heaven as Christ himself did. Christians must so live as to be prepared for Christ's return at any time and that's a very important last sentence Christians must so live as to be prepared for Christ's return at any time we don't know the day or hour of his return and we certainly do not know the day or hour of our death but if you and I died today and we were in the faith strong in the faith uh, that's okay we can sleep and uh, go up with Jesus at his return We'll be going up before those that who are alive and remain on the earth. So we have to stay prepared for his coming and for the time that our life ends. We want to be found faithful, whichever comes first. So chapter 1 of Thessal First Thessalonians. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father, knowing that Brethren beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. 
and ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. There's another important scripture for us in the time that we're seeing. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Jesus delivered us from the wrath to come because he bore our sins. We were dead in sins, but we became alive in Jesus when we believe in him. And uh, we are delivered from our sins, and we are delivered from the wrath that will come soon on the ungodly and unbelieving Chapter 2, for yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. But even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as ye know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time use we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. And that's what the Lord requires of ministers today, to behave holy among those who are over, justly and unblameably. You know, you're the example before the flock. So, yes, a lot is required of those that are in ministry leadership. Verse 11, as you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children, that you would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. So see, we're in a fight. When you're serving the Lord and you're doing the Lord's work, here's Paul saying Satan hindered us. So uh, we have to know how to pray against those hindrances. 
how to seek the Lord when we are being hindered until we have the breakthrough we need and go forward again in the Lord's work. Verse 19, for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Chapter 3, wherefore when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. So the Lord has told us that we will have tribulation in this world. So appointed to it, if you're going to love the Lord, follow the Lord, you're going to have tribulation, and the world will hate you. Jesus said, they hated me, they will hate you. And uh, we see that very much today accelerating. Verse 4, For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass. And you know, for this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity and that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God again for you for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith? Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Praise the Lord. We look forward to your coming, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. And what are we doing? We're being faithful. And he was saying, To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God so Paul was bragging on them he had heard he they've been delivered from serving idols and they've heard the word of the Lord and they've gotten hold of it the Holy Ghost worked and he delivered a message of salvation to them and they are filled with joy and they're filling Paul with joy because if you've helped someone to the Lord and they stay with it and they don't turn back that is a joy to you and, uh, you know, all we can do is go deliver the word of the Lord every day, wherever we can, serve people wherever we can, and then leave it up to the Lord what he does in their hearts. But we each one have to guard our hearts, and we have to work diligently to be before the Lord, to stay honest before the Lord, and to examine ourselves that we are in the faith, and that our hearts are right before the Lord because he does come soon praise god i love you jesus loves you more if you're someone that has stopped by and you haven't given your heart to the lord before acts 238 tells us that we need to repent we've got to turn from our sins we've got to be sick of sin and turn to serve the lord in his righteousness repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, the Lord's arms are open, and uh, he will receive you if you call on him in faith and in truth. If you have a sincere heart, godly sorrow worketh repentance. Praise the Lord. Well, we'll see when I get to upload this. We'll give it to Jesus and let him take care of it. I love you. Be blessed.